Hello and welcome to the car repair hub once again. Today we have a Mitsubishi Outlander in the shop. It has a transmission problem. So this car, when you drive for a little while, this message will pop up on your dash telling you to service your transmission. So let's see what we have to do and what we can do. I drove the car around just to confirm the customer's complaint but when you are stationary or when you off the car then you start it again you might not be seeing that message but this one is always on the four wheel drive is also having a problem with a different code but today we'll be focusing on the code with the transmission when you drive for about one to two minutes it's not even up to for some few seconds it will pop out a uh, service transmission transmission service required and you see the drive flashing so this is the code and this is what we'll be addressing so it took me a little while to figure where this sensor was because i've checked online almost uh the whole day i couldn't find where that sensor was located so that's why i'm recording this video to show you where to find the transmission output sensor for this car mine is a 2016 Mitsubishi outlander and I think it will be the same for the other models since maybe they will be using the same transmission if not the same transmission but the same similar design so the, the transmission output speed sensor is located at the back of the transmission so you have to take your airbox out first you need some 10 MMT then a 10 L spanner flash screwdriver First, you disconnect this one that's going to the throttle then you look down there you see an about 10 mm there you unscrew that one too the math sensor is already disconnected so you just pull this one out so that's the air box or the air cleaner box that's the air box that one is out so the sensor is located far behind the closer to the steering shaft so it so the sensor is the one the cable is going down there too uh, my camera is not focusing for you to see but it's way down there so when you take the airbox out and you actually look down there you'll be seeing it closer to the stabilizer bar there so that's the sensor i'll grab my number 10 mm the l type or if you get a ratchet it will be able to lose this so I get my 10 mml down there. My camera is not getting a very good focus for you to see what I'm doing now. But that's that's the session you'll be looking at. That's the particular place you'll be looking at to find this uh, transmission output sensor. I've searched the online the whole day. I wasted my whole time. I didn't see anything useful. So that's why I'm recording this video. In case you have this code and we are looking forward to find the sensor that's where it is i've done my live data already before i go ahead to replace the sensor i've done my live data already but using the hotel i couldn't get any data pit mentioning transmission output sensor but i saw vehicle speed vehicle speed so when i was driving i saw the speedometer reading but that vehicle uh, uh, vehicle speed wasn't reading so that's why i got to realize that no that might be my uh my my output so this what happened the connector supposed to be three pin and the sensor to is a three pin so the one of the pin got broken because of water intrusion inside there so yesterday i disconnected it then i saw what happened it's today that i'm getting the parts and the owner just bought a car so that we replace it so this is the replacement part i got it with the socket together even though the colors are not matching it doesn't matter so i'm going to use this connector in place of the one that have been spoiled by water i don't want any headache i want to be free so when you see a connector that's not very good like if you can get a connector get a connector and replace it so that you will not have back and forth thinking that the sensor is not good meanwhile you just have poor connection so this is what i'm going to do since there are three wires i will just arrange them uh 
just take off the first one connect it to the first side of the replacement connector then take the middle one connect it to the middle side of my connector and then take the last one and also connect it to the next side of my connector so let's start i'll start by disconnecting the black one i cut that one off strip the mouth then align it with this one first one to first one yeah that's it so i'll connect it to that one wrap it around make sure it's very tight i know i don't have solding iron i don't have heat shrinks and those stuff i don't have but this connection i'm doing i promise you is going to stay nothing is going to happen this is very tight and i'm going to use insulation on it so if you don't know how to do uh insulation that would be a problem because you have to know how you wrap the tape around the wires so that there will not be any side of the wire that is still open so that water might intrude in affecting your connections so this one is done so let's move to the middle that's the blue one you see my side cutter then i strip the tip of it put this one you see the way i'm doing my connection you tie it then you bind it together so with this type of where i'm doing this connection there's no way uh, vibration or something is going to cause this wire to make loose because you, you twist it around then you, you you bind it together you twist it like you are doing dreadlocks you twist it together so there's no way vibration or uh, tensioning is going to pull off the connection unless the wire strands itself break off so we are moving to the third one that's actually blue on the replacement connector but on the third terminal that's uh, brown so that, that's why i'm telling you the colors are not the same so you have to be careful with how you are putting it because by accident if you interchange the position of the wires which means you have changed the whole wiring diagram of the thing maybe you have used a 5 volt reference or is it your volt reference for a signal pin so which is not going to work and it will be giving you some codes you think it's the sensor by then you have misplaced the wires already and i don't have the wiring diagram for this that was uh, one of the reasons why yesterday i couldn't finish this work up because i didn't have any information as to where this sensor is located and i don't have the wiring diagram so if you're having the wiring diagram you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do with it but when you are doing this to make it simple just do it pin by pin when you cut the first pin you join it to the first pin second pin to the second pin third pin for for the third pin so pin for pin and everything is going to work in your favor so that you do not struggle with this thing something that might be simple as just connecting and joining you cause a whole lot of problem for yourself and you cannot figure it out because right now all the three wires you have to keep changing them until maybe you get the code clear you are going to waste a lot of time doing that so just do it this simple way then everything will be fine you will save yourself some time and the problem will be solved so i'm done with the connections just adding some more tape on it to hold that uh how do they call it, the pvc is it conduit should i call this conduit or trunk or tube yeah any of them so that is done so i'll fix it back then we'll go ahead to scan the car again and see what we get so as expected we still have one code in the system which means we still have the same code i'll go to the report to see if it's still the same thing if it's still the same thing then the status of the code should change because now we get a proper sensor and we get a proper connector so the status should change to store even though we are having a code in the all wheel uh, control system the awc but that code for the transmission should be taken care of so let's go to report and check what is going on uh let's go down down yes 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 that's it we have fixed it p0720 is now stored but we can still see that there's a code in the awc which is still active i'm not going to bother myself with that let me quickly erase this one to see if the sensor with the socket has fixed that problem he is bothered about uh okay 
a bag that's not my problem but awc code 2 is gone does that mean the sensor fixed the problem so let's take it for a spin help me record this and let's go so now you can see vehicle speed sensor signal that's the word vehicle speed sensor signal at first it was reading zero when you are moving and that's the one that is taking the signal from that output shaft so this got me confused because i was expecting it to be reading since the uh the main speedometer is reading i was expecting to see some speed but it was zero then i said okay then that might be my output shaft or uh, output uh, vehicle speed sensor signal so now it's reading perfect you can see my primary speed to reading so it's having two sensors one in front in front of the uh the gearbox or the transmission and one behind it so one is for the input that's from the top converter there coming and one is for the output shaft that's going to the uh the front shaft and the uh the rear wheel drive from the long shaft going so now everything is reading perfectly i can see some speed there so let, let's take it for a spin Let, let's drive for a while and see whether we have the transmission uh, message popping up if we still popping up then we know we still have a long way to go so everything is still perfect we're moving for a while now let me try to speed it up let's speed it and see whether the speed will increase with the vehicle speed or it will remain the same okay it's actually increasing it's getting to 31 now 32 33 34 36 37 38 okay let me slow down a little bit and see uh, okay it's working it's working it's, it's actually coming down then when you speed and it's increasing this is amazing so every time you have to be looking at your data pits and remember information is very important if you don't have the right information this work you will not be able to solve anything so the moment you don't have the right information don't try to force yourself to do anything because you might just be doing the wrong thing all this while so it's better you waste a lot of time to do your homework well than to be on the job and you don't know where to go next and what to do next so it's better to let the customer know that yes you have a problem but this is your problem i have little knowledge on it or i have less information on it so you go i'll look at the information then i'll see what we can do then for you to be on the car for hours without solving anything you might be seen as very very incompetent because you are you are just on the job and you are not fixing their problems remember what the customer cares about is their problems if you don't solve them they are just as useless as any other technician so just to remind you now the transmission everything is off but we still have the 4wd system uh, service required wiper watchful i'm not bothered about that so he's going today we will look at what we have to do about that code in the, in the awc thank you for watching this is the car repair hub see you next time